Hi there, it's Jeff here with a uh, revision essay plan, a 25 marker based around the Edexcel spec. This time looking at UK trade agreements post leaving the European Union. So here's your question. STEM for a macro essay in 2023, UK exports to the EU accounted for 42 percent of total exports of goods and services, down from 47 percent in 2019. Since leaving the EU, the UK has signed new trade agreements with countries such as Australia, New Zealand and Japan and joined the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. And the question is, evaluate the extent to which new trade agreements might improve the performance of the UK economy. So what we're going to do in these videos is, is try and fit an essay plan on one slide built around my five key paragraphs. So here's my first analysis point. And it's to do with the potential for growing export markets, export sales. So new trade agreements reduce import tariffs, trade liberalisation and boost export opportunities. And in particular, uh, CPTPP gives UK firms access to potentially faster growing Asian Pacific markets. So the likes of Malaysia and uh, whatever it is, Taiwan are fast and Singapore are faster growing countries uh, than the European Union. Rising UK exports can have a positive multiplier effect. Good scope for a diagram there. Potentially generate new jobs in some regions hit hard by Brexit. So focus there on the importance of uh, trade agreements as a way of stimulating export growth, the derived demand for labour, and also perhaps an accelerator effect on investment. The valuation point, however, is that these gains may be limited due to geographical distance. You may have come across the gravity theory of trade, which says that we trade more typically with countries where, that are our nearest neighbour, the European Union being a good example, and the presence of non-tariff barriers and the relatively small share of UK trade with these partners, in particular with uh, Australia and New Zealand, compared to the EU, may limit the gains. Now, the trade creation benefits from lower tariffs might be, might be less than the trade diversion effects because we're diverting trade away from a near neighbour that could well have been a lower cost supplier. So the net effects of these trade agreements, the net consequences could be quite small. My second argument is that new trade deals often are linked with measures to attract investments. You, you sign a trade deal and that also acts as a catalyst for inflows and outflows of FDI. good example might be Japanese car makers, uh, Nissan, for example, announcing that they are going to continue and expand their EV um, operations, electric vehicle operations in the UK, particularly in the Northeast post Japan trade deal. FDI, if it happens, boosts jobs and technology transfer, the spurb effects, and the FDI that comes in from these countries could well be a long term benefit, not just for our demand for AD, but also for a long-run aggregate supply. On the other hand, again, casting doubt, challenging, the European Union remains the UK's biggest trade partner. So although we've signed these new trade deals, we can't ignore the European Union, and regulatory differences post-Brexit are imposing trade frictions. So the truth is that lots of small and medium-sized enterprises, or SMEs, are really struggling to meet rules of origin for tariff-free UK uh, EU access. And that's going to get worse in 25, 26 with more stringent um, sanitary requirements and um, animal safety requirements. So that it limits the real benefits from, from uh, terms of the trade agreement. Indeed, UK export intensity has fallen since 2020. Exports as a share of GDP, in particular goods. We've done well in services, but our exports of goods have really struggled in part because of the pandemic, but also because of Brexit. And that brings some welfare losses too, and particularly in terms of increased prices of, of European goods coming into the UK. Now, you need a final reason comment. So here's mine. While new trade agreements offer some long-term potential, so I'm using the long-term idea, they're unlikely to fully offset lost EU trade access. That's my view. So that's my comment at the end. And I would develop the point by saying the UK will need to improve our existing trade deal with the EU and perhaps consider rejoining the single market, such as Norway, it's outside the EU, but inside the single market, or perhaps joining the customs union, which is what Turkey 
has chosen to do. Now, of course, this is unlikely in the current political context, but you could still make this point economically. Lots of scope for diagrams in this kind of question, ADAS, trade liberalisation diagrams, that kind of stuff. But I've built two arguments in favour of trade and investment deals with other countries, uh, benefiting exports, benefiting long run aggregate supply, but two evaluation points suggesting that the net, the overall effect, could be limited by trade frictions and by geography. There we go. Thank you.